The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Moskowitz, for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Today is Valentine's Day, but I don't celebrate Valentine's Day anymore. I haven't celebrated Valentine's Day in six years. Today is a difficult day for myself, many in the city of Parkland, and my constituents. You see, it's the sixth anniversary of the mass shooting at my high school, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, in my hometown of Parkland. I remember February 14th, 2018, like it was yesterday. I was in Tallahassee when my wife called and said something terrible has happened at the high school around the corner from our home. I was informed that there had been a mass shooting. I immediately traveled home to Parkland. I went to the school that I graduated from and saw what it looks like when your high school is turned into a war zone. I then went to the hotel where they were keeping the families of the kids who were missing. I knew they weren't missing. For eight hours, they waited in that hotel while the Broward Sheriff's Office and the FBI told them what happened to their kid. They pulled families out one by one into a separate area of the ballroom, separated by a partition. The process went on from 12.30 in the morning till 3 in the morning. I didn't hear crying. I heard screaming. It haunts me every day. 17 innocent people didn't make it out of that building on that fateful day. I knew we had, we had to do something. And so I brought my colleagues from the Florida legislature to see the building firsthand and see how it affected families in my community. What we saw was unfathomable to imagine, the site of the deadliest high school shooting in American history. Families now have empty rooms in their home. They have empty chairs at the dinner table. My own son, who was four years old at the time, went to preschool right around the corner, separated by a traffic light from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. And the teacher that was with my four-year-old in a closet that day, daughter was killed. While she was protecting my son, her daughter Jamie was killed at Douglas. Like previous Valentine's Day, the parents, the wives, will spend their time visiting children at the cemetery or their husbands at the cemetery. I remember parents telling me one thing, and they said it over and over, and it has stuck with me ever since. And they said, the only thing I did wrong was send my kid to school. That's not on them. That's an indictment on us. It's an indictment on the elected officials who have failed to do nothing to keep our kids safe in school. I mean, look at them. These were babies murdered in their classroom. Teachers. Aaron Feist I went to high school with. He was on my football team when we were in high school. He became a football coach. He ran in to try to help and was gunned down. At least in Florida, we did something after the shooting at my high school. The Florida legislature passed the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas School Safety Act. It raised the age to buy a firearm to 21. It instituted red flag laws, three-day waiting periods. By the way, those red flag laws, which take weapons out of the hands of people who are mentally ill, have been used 12,000 times in six years. 12,000 times law enforcement in the state of Florida has deemed someone too dangerous to them, either a danger to themselves or a danger to others. We put hundreds of millions of dollars into mental health, school resource officers, school safety, and this was passed on a bipartisan basis. In fact, it was led by my Republican colleagues, A-plus rated members of the NRA, signed into law by Governor Scott, who became a U.S. Senator. They got it right that day. They got it right. 
And we did that while still upholding people's constitutional freedoms and rights. Mr. Spe Madam Speaker, as we sadly reflect today on the sixth anniversary of the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, I'm going to use the rest of my time to sit in silence after I read the names of the victims. Alyssa Aladef, Martin Duque Anguiano, Scott Beagle, Nicholas Dorette, Aaron Feiss, Gentlemen's time's expired. Jamie Guttenberg, Chris Hickson, Luke Hoyer, Kara Lochran, Gina Montalto, Joaquin Oliver, Elena Petty, Meadow Pollock, Helena Ramsey, Alex Schachter, Carmen Shemtrup, and Peter Wang. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Burchett, for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I seek unanimous consent to address the House for five minutes to revise and extend my